In the realm of blockchain technology, Ethereum's consensus mechanism, LMD Ghost, is a critical component. However, it has been found vulnerable to commitment attacks, which can disrupt the balance of power between block proposers and voters. A single adversarial block proposer can manipulate the reward system for timely votes, leading to long-range chain reorganizations. This manipulation allows the adversary to coerce voters into supporting conflicting blocks, undermining the intended decentralized nature of the system. To address this issue, researchers have proposed a novel reward mechanism that aims to restore the role of voters as a check against proposer power. This new mechanism seeks to make the system fairer and more decentralized, ensuring that the power dynamics are balanced and the integrity of the blockchain is maintained. The findings highlight the importance of continually evaluating and improving the security measures of blockchain technologies to protect against potential vulnerabilities. Ethereum's reward mechanism is vulnerable to commitment attacks, compromising the security of its consensus protocol. To achieve the EB band flow property, Ethereum employs two sub-protocols, LMD Ghost, which outputs a canonical chain as the available ledger, and Casper FFG, which checkpoints blocks on this canonical chain. The security of LMD Ghost is crucial for the security of both ledgers and Ethereum consensus overall. Many Ethereum users act on time-sensitive transactions as soon as they enter the canonical chain, without waiting for their finalization by Casper FFG making them susceptible to instability on the chain tip. Validators are incentivized to reorganize blocks at the end of the canonical chain to capture the maximal extractable value, or MEV, by proposing new blocks on top of older blocks rather than the chain tip. To prevent reorgs, Ethereum's LMD Ghost protocol proceeds in 12-second slots, each with a unique block proposer and a committee of attesters that send head votes for the block at the tip of the canonical chain in their view. To deter future leaders from reorging blocks, these attesters must be incentivized to vote for the proposal at the canonical chain tip before the next slot. Ethereum's head vote reward mechanism rewards votes sent at a slot T only if the vote is included in some block B proposed at slot T plus 1 and if the vote is for a block on the canonical chain. Additionally, Ethereum's inclusion reward mechanism rewards the slot T plus 1 leader for including timely slot T votes in its block. Despite these rewards, MEV remains a significant concern, and the timeliness of head votes is crucial for mitigating reorg attempts and achieving reorg resilience in the presence of payoff maximizing validators. New reorg resilient proposals, such as Goldfish and RLMD GHOST, have emerged to replace LMD Ghost. These proposals aim to improve the security of Ethereum's consensus protocol by preventing reorgs and ensuring the stability of the canonical chain. Incentivizing previous slot attesters to refrain from voting for their slots block remains an unresolved challenge in LMD Ghost and other consensus protocols. This paper presents a series of commitment attacks that exploit the head vote reward mechanism, compromising the reorg resilience and security of LMD Ghost. These attacks do not require the adversary to control a large stake, communication network, or validators, nor do they involve bribery. Instead, the adversarial leader commits to a credible threat, which rational attesters must be aware of to react accordingly. This can be achieved through various commitment methods, such as those discussed in section 4.4. Notably, over 90% of Ethereum validators use out-of-protocol software, MevBoost, which can be extended to facilitate game communication between adversarial leaders and attesters, making the attacks more viable. Two types of attacks are presented the simple attack and the extended attack. The simple attack involves the adversarial leader informing slot T at testers to vote for the parent of block B instead of B itself, committing to including only compliant votes in its block. This creates a Nash equilibrium where the attack is successful, and the adversary receives the attestation inclusion reward. The extended attack involves reorging a sequence of consecutive blocks with empty blocks. The adversary uses a fork of empty blocks to reorg the P blocks proposed at slots T P plus 1, T, and incentivizes not only the slot T plus P plus 1 attesters but also leaders and attesters of previous slots to follow its instructions. This attack is illustrated with a sketch where P equals 2, T equals 0, and the adversary aims to reorg two consecutive blocks with a fork of empty blocks. 
Throughout the attacks, the head vote reward mechanism plays a critical role in incentivizing rational attesters to comply with the adversary's instructions. The authors highlight the importance of addressing this vulnerability to ensure the security and reorg resilience of LMD Ghost and other consensus protocols. In the context of Ethereum's reward mechanism, commitment attacks are examined, where an adversary manipulates validators to propose and vote for a fork of empty blocks, deviating from the canonical chain. The attack is formalized through a set of instructions for leaders and attesters in slots 1 and 2, who are incentivized to comply with the adversary's strategy. The adversary's strategy is as follows. In slot 1, the leader proposes an empty block B1 on top of B2, and attesters vote for B1 if it's empty and extends B2, or vote for B1 otherwise. If B1 is compliant and gathers sufficient votes, the slot 2 leader proposes an empty block B2, including the compliant slot 1 votes, on top of B1. But testers in slot 2 vote for B2 if it's empty, includes the compliant slot 1 votes, and extends B1, or vote for B1 otherwise. Crucially, the adversary commits to including only compliant slot 2 votes in its block B3. This commitment creates a cascade of incentives for attesters to vote for compliant blocks. Specifically, slot 2 attesters vote for B2 only if it's compliant, ensuring that B2 receives enough votes and cannot be reorganized by B3. Similarly, slot 1 attesters vote for B1 only if it's compliant, ensuring that B1 receives enough votes and cannot be reorganized by B2 or B3. Ultimately, all leaders and attesters in slots 1 and 2 vote for a chain of empty blocks, B1 and B2, conflicting with B1 and BO, enabling the adversary to reorganize B1 and B0. As shown in Section 5, this extended attack results in a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, allowing for arbitrarily long reorgs. The research paper examines three distinct types of attacks on the reorg resilience of the Ethereum protocol. The nothing at stake attack, the stake bleeding attack, and the selfish mining inspired attack. These attacks leverage the rational behavior of validators to incentivize protocol deviations. The authors demonstrate that these attacks can result in reorgs of non-adversarial blocks, even when the adversary controls less than one-third of the total stake. The nothing at stake attack occurs when a validator has no stake in the game, allowing them to vote for both forks without penalty. This can result in a reorg of non-adversarial blocks. The stake bleeding attack involves an adversary controlling a staking pool that worries more about losing head vote rewards than potential slot 2 votes. By incentivizing attesters to vote for the adversarial fork, the adversary can create a reorg of non-adversarial blocks. The selfish mining inspired attack is similar to the original selfish mining attack but is tailored for staking pools controlling attesters in every slot. By requesting attesters to withhold their votes until the end of a slot range and then broadcasting votes for the adversarial block, the adversary can create an equilibrium where the honest fork gets reorged by the adversarial fork. The authors also analyze the impact of potential future changes in the Ethereum protocol, such as block slot voting, secret leader election, proposer builder separation, and single slot finality, on these attacks. They observe that none of these modifications can mitigate them, as the attacks exploit the payoff maximizing nature of rational validators. Ethereum's reward mechanism is vulnerable to commitment attacks, which can compromise the integrity of the network. To address this, a novel decentralized head vote reward mechanism called DAG votes is proposed. This approach replaces the traditional leader based system with a committee of attesters, decentralizing the reward process. In this mechanism, the committee of slot T plus 1 serves as the beacon of truth, determining timely votes. Each attester in slot T plus 1 must sign the votes in their view, ensuring a fairer reward distribution and protecting attesters' rewards even when the leader or a minority of attesters are offline. This decentralized approach mitigates the risk of commitment attacks, enhancing the security and fairness of the reward mechanism. The authors estimate the overhead of a practical implementation of DAG votes, which is backward compatible with the existing Ethereum infrastructure, making it a feasible solution for real-world adoption. The authors discuss the security of proof-of-stake consensus protocols, focusing on Ethereum's LMD ghost fork choice rule. 
They highlight the balancing attack, which allows an adversary to create conflicting blocks indefinitely under synchrony by carefully timing the release of a few withheld adversarial votes. Subsequent changes, including the proposer boost and equivocation discounting, were introduced to mitigate these attacks. The paper then shifts focus to the effect of the reward mechanism on security in the presence of rational validators. The author's attacks do not require violating any slashing condition or controlling more than a single block proposer, making the bar for the attack lower than earlier consensus attacks. Successful attacks do not even require violating the protocol. Parallels are drawn with works on honest but rational validators who delay blocks to capture more MEV and the concept of coalition safe equilibria in Bitcoin and fruit chain. The paper concludes by outlining the bar model of protocol participants. In the context of Ethereum's reward mechanism, this research paper examines commitment attacks on state machine replication, SMR, consensus protocols. Specifically, it focuses on total order broadcast, where nodes agree on a growing sequence of transactions, referred to as the ledger or chain. In this network model, an adversary controls a subset of validators, capable of violating consensus rules arbitrarily. The synchronous network assumes a known delay upper bound of increment, normalized to 1, with a lockstep communication model where messages are sent at discrete intervals and delivered by the next interval. The security requirements for this system include safety, ensuring consistency among validators' ledgers, and tconflibness, which guarantees that transactions input to a validator at time t will be included in all validators' ledgers by time t plus tkif. The paper also explores the LMD Ghost protocol, which divides the validator set into 32 disjoint committees with unique slots within an epic. Each committee has a unique leader, and the adversary is aware of adversarial slots before the epic begins. Ultimately, this research sets the stage for further analysis of the interaction between adversarial and rational validators in the context of Ethereum's reward mechanism providing a foundation for future studies on commitment attacks and SMR consensus protocols. In the LMD ghost fork choice rule, validators identify the canonical chain of blocks by iteratively selecting the child block with the largest weight, breaking ties in favor of the adversary, and considering the proposal boost. A slot's vote is valid only if it is for a block with a slot number greater than or equal to the current slot and was sent by a slot's a tester. Reorganizations, or reorgs, occur when a block proposed at some time is not in the canonical chain for the first time at a later time. While reorgs of a few honestly proposed blocks do not necessarily imply a liveness violation, reorgs of arbitrarily long block sequences would violate LMD ghost safety and liveness. The Ethereum reward mechanism incentivizes slot leaders to propose blocks and validators to correctly and timely attest to their view of the canonical chain through inclusion rewards and attestation rewards, respectively. An attestation is eligible for the attestation reward if it is included in the canonical chain and is correct and timely, where a slot's head vote is correct if it is the last block within the canonical chain from slot's s, element of, 0, s, and timely if included in the subsequent block of slot T plus 1. However, in the presence of solo validators, the reward mechanism can be exploited by the adversary to incentivize validators to submit votes that benefit the adversary, as illustrated in figs 1a and 1b. This simple attack highlights a vulnerability in the current system. The authors discuss commitment attacks on Ethereum's reward mechanism proposing a game-theoretic model to analyze strategic interactions between rational validators and a Byzantine adversary. The adversary aims to manipulate validators into following its preferred action, potentially leading to financial loss for non-compliant validators. The game model is defined with rational validators having two actions, building a new block for a slot and sending a slot's vote for any block in their view. The adversary can deviate arbitrarily and communicate messages to any validator. Rational validators never propose two different blocks or send multiple head votes for the same slot, as these actions are detectable and would result in slashing their stake. The game starts with an adversarial leader and rational solo validators. The initial payoff is zero, and players are risk neutral with utility function u, x, equals x. The adversary succeeds if less than WP slot T at testers vote for BT by time 3T plus 3, failing if over WP do. 
The game ends at the end of slot T, with payoffs realized at time 3 T plus 3. The adversary's action involves generating a leadership proof, setting game rules, committing to excluding non-compliant votes, and broadcasting these to all slot T attesters. At the start of slot T plus 1, it includes only compliant votes in BT. In the context of a simple game with solo validators, the analysis reveals the existence of a Nash equilibrium where the adversary succeeds. This is proven in detail in Appendix B. However, it's also noted that there are multiple Nash equilibria where the adversary does not achieve success. The role of bribery in achieving success, even with a limited budget, is highlighted, and how smart contracts can facilitate this process is discussed. Under the assumption of an honest minority, the network remains vulnerable to the simple attack. The credibility of the adversary's threat to include only compliant votes can be enforced through trusted execution environments. The paper examines commitment attacks on Ethereum's reward mechanism, focusing on the T's signatures for block verification. It introduces an adversary that can commit to a strategy to reorg blocks, assuming a rational adversary can commit to any strategy for a non-negative payoff. The attack involves an adversarial leader committing to a strategy and communicating a credible threat to validators. The paper extends this attack to include multiple leaders engaging in such attacks. It also describes an extended game where the adversary engages with validators of multiple consecutive slots to reorg multiple blocks. The game involves rational solo validators and aims to succeed by reorging the canonical chain with a sequence of empty blocks. The paper defines compliant blocks and votes, and the concept of a compliant tip at a specific slot, detailing the adversary's action and the game's objectives. In the context of blockchain technology and distributed ledger systems, the authors propose an extended game for achieving a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, SPNE, in the leadership election. This is achieved through a compliant block and vote mechanism that encourages validators to follow a specific game rule. The extended game is designed to last multiple slots, with each slot having its own leader who proposes a compliant block. The game rule dictates that for each slot I in P, the slot I leader should propose a compliant block, and the slot I testers should send compliant votes. A key aspect of this game is the commitment by the adversary A to exclude non-compliant slot P votes from its block BA. To identify the compliant tip at slot I, the authors use algorithm 1 which iteratively checks each block in the block tree of BP and records the slot number of the non-compliant block with the largest slot in the prefix of B. The block B is identified as the compliant tip if it is in CHB and has the smallest slot number of the last non-compliant block in its prefix among all blocks considered. The authors define compliance for slots and blocks, specifying that a compliant slot I block is empty and proposed on top of block BP. For slots I equals 2, P, a slot I block is compliant if it is empty, proposed on top of the compliant tip returned by algorithm 1 at time 3 I, and contains only the compliant slot I1 votes for its parent. The adversary A generates a proof asserting its leadership in slot P plus 1 and sets the game rule before slot 1 starts. At the start of slot P plus 1, a proposes its block BA on top of the compliant tip returned by algorithm 1 at time 3 P and includes only the compliant slot P votes in BA. The analysis of the extended game focuses on achieving a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, where solo players follow the game rule. This is crucial for maintaining the integrity and security of the blockchain network, as it encourages validators to act in a manner that supports the overall health of the network. The research discusses the existence of subgame perfect Nash equilibria in the extended game of Ethereum's reward mechanism, where an adversary can successfully violate the security of LMD Ghost. Theorem 8 proves the existence of such an SPNE, where solo validators are incentivized to follow the adversary's game rule. Note 9 highlights multiple SPNE where the adversary is not successful, and the ability to ensure success by offering bribes. The analysis shifts to attacks in the presence of a fixed attester set, applicable to Ethereum with single-slot finality and other protocols. The payoff of a solo validator depends on its votes in each slot, with Theorem 10 proving a Nash equilibrium where the adversary succeeds. Figure 6 illustrates the proof. 
Notes highlight Nash equilibria where the adversary is not successful and the ability to ensure success through bribes. The extended game under a fixed attester set is also analyzed, with Theorem 12 proving SPNE where the adversary succeeds and violates LMD ghost security. The payoff of a staking pool P with a total stake share less than WP is analyzed in Figure 6. The staking pool P controls M votes in each slot, where M can be 1, representing a solo validator, or greater than 1, representing a coalition of solo validators. The reward for a single correct and timely head vote is denoted by R. The events VP and NVP represent the staking pool P voting and not voting for BT1, respectively, whereas A and NA denote the events that less than WP and WP or more slot T at testers vote for BT, respectively. The payoff of the staking pool P is equal to Mr. when it votes for BT1 and WP or more slot T at testers vote for BT, as shown in Figure 6, A. In contrast, the payoff is zero when the staking pool P does not vote for BT1 and less than WP slot T at testers vote for BT, as depicted in Figure 6, C. The proof of Theorem 12, which is presented in Appendix E, follows a similar outline to the proof of Theorem 8. Note 13 highlights the existence of subgame perfect Nash equilibria, SPNE, where the adversary A is not successful, unlike in Note 9. In these SPNE, the adversary cannot ensure its success by offering a small bribe to the attesters to send compliant votes. Instead, the attesters achieve greater payoffs by extending a chain from block B0, resulting in a total payoff of 2PR during the 2P plus 1 slots within P, P. Under an honest minority assumption, there still exists a SPNE where the adversary succeeds. The existence of such equilibria incentivizes attesters to collude as a single entity, such as a staking pool, to mitigate the attack. However, an adversary faced with colluding attesters may refer to the selfish mining inspired attack in Appendix F, which requires a larger stake share and can incentivize even colluding validators to comply with the adversary. In the context of staking pools, a staking pool P controlling less than WP at testers per slot is incentivized to act compliantly, as voting for BT1 weekly dominates any other action in the simple game, as shown in Figure 6. This is because the payoff of the staking pool P is higher when it votes for BT1 and WP or more slot T at testers vote for BT. The DAG votes mechanism in Ethereum's reward system is vulnerable to commitment attacks. To address this, each slot T plus 1 a tester must sign all slot thread votes at the beginning of slot T plus 1, generating a slot evidence. And a tester gains a reward for its vote if it's included in any block B within the canonical chain, being correct and timely. The DAG votes mechanism reduces the adversary's influence over attestation rewards unless it controls half of the committee. An adversary with bounded stake cannot indefinitely delay evidence inclusion making previous attacks unsuccessful. A practical version of DAG votes is presented, comparing its performance with Ethereum's current mechanism. The BLS signature is used for attestations due to its key homomorphism, allowing for aggregation of attestations into a single aggregated attestation. Each block can include these aggregates, resulting in a total of 64 aggregates per slot. The authors propose a practical version of directed acyclic graph, DAG, votes to address communication and storage overheads. In this version, a subset of attesters is sampled in each slot to serve as aggregators responsible for generating evidence. An attestation must gather over n limit evidences to be considered timely. Each evidence is composed of three parts, the signature of the evidence generator, the aggregated attestation signature, and an aggregation list specifying which validator's attestations are included in the aggregated signature. The parameters NAG and NLIMIT should be configured to ensure that each subcommittee has more than NLIMIT non-adversarial available aggregators with high probability. The authors then compare the performance of their solution with the current Ethereum version under three scenarios. The ideal scenario, the optimistic scenario, and the worst case scenario. In the ideal scenario, the performance of their solution is the same as the current Ethereum version as slot T plus 1 aggregators are not required to generate any slot T evidences. In the context of Ethereum's reward mechanism, 
Commitment attacks can be initiated by adversaries who leverage their stake share to manipulate the protocol's intended behavior. The authors present an analysis of two scenarios, the optimistic and the worst-case scenario, both considering an adversarial stake share of less than or equal to one-third and 0.1, respectively. The optimistic scenario assumes that the majority of slot T plus 1 aggregators sign the same aggregated attestation, resulting in an aggregated evidence. This scenario incurs a block space overhead of 33.712 kilobytes, leading to an 8.43% increase in block size. The computational overhead for aggregators, block proposers, and verifiers is also assessed, with times ranging from 0.59 seconds for aggregators to 1.36 seconds for block proposers. Communication overhead involves each aggregator sending an additional pair of messages totaling 192 extra bytes. The worst-case scenario, with an adversarial stake share of 0.1, results in a higher evidence size per block of 506.624 kilobytes and increased computational overhead for 256 NAG signature verifications. The communication overhead remains the same as the optimistic scenario. The paper highlights the challenges in designing protocol mechanisms due to the potential for adversaries to commit to conditional courses of action, especially when commitment devices are available within the protocol's enclosure. It emphasizes the importance of considering the order of commitments, as players can gain significant advantages by committing first. The authors identify several avenues for future work, including determining whether certain attacks constitute best responses for rational attackers exploring equilibria when all participants benefit from the commitment ability, and examining the importance of the sequence of play in determining outcomes. This includes a list of 24 specific areas for further investigation. The authors conduct a comprehensive review of existing literature on commitment attacks on Ethereum's reward mechanism, starting with Ouroboros Genesis, a composable proof-of-stake blockchain with dynamic availability that introduced proof-of-stake consensus protocols. They delve into cryptographic primitives, citing short signatures from the while pairing, a technique used in various blockchain protocols. The review covers blockchain consensus protocols, including Tendiment, Casper, and Ghost, highlighting their design trade-offs, accountability, and practical use cases. The authors examine Beacon Chain Casper, a mini-spec designed to improve Ethereum scalability and security. They also discuss various attacks on blockchain protocols, including front-running, transaction reordering, and consensus instability in decentralized exchanges. The literature review explores no more attacks on proof-of-stake Ethereum and recent advances in ghost protocols. It also delves into single-slot finality protocols, which aim to improve the efficiency and security of Ethereum's consensus mechanism. The authors examine proposer-builder separation and its implications on Ethereum's decentralization. The review concludes by discussing incentive mechanisms and their applications in blockchain protocols, highlighting the need for a stratified approach to blockchain decentralization. The authors also explore coalition-safe equilibria with virtual payoffs, which aims to improve the security and fairness of blockchain protocols. Overall, this review provides a comprehensive overview of commitment attacks on Ethereum's reward mechanism, covering cryptographic primitives, consensus protocols, and attacks on blockchain protocols. The page delves into the realm of blockchain and consensus mechanisms, particularly focusing on Ethereum's proof-of-stake system. It commences with Satoshi Nakamoto's seminal Bitcoin paper, which introduced a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system that has revolutionized the financial landscape. The discussion then shifts to Ryuya Nakamura's research on bouncing attacks and their prevention, shedding light on potential vulnerabilities within the POS consensus mechanism. Following this, it explores Joachim Nye's work on balancing attacks, snap and chat protocols, and ebb and flow protocols. These contributions aim to resolve the availability finality dilemma, a critical challenge in achieving consensus in distributed ledger technology. The page also touches upon Burek Oz's investigation into MEV rewards, which are crucial for incentivizing validators in POS systems. Furthermore, it highlights Raphael Pass and Elaine Shi's contributions to FAIR blockchain and the sleepy model of consensus, offering insights into the design of more equitable and secure blockchain networks. Additionally, the summary mentions Thomas Schelling's strategy of conflict, 
providing a theoretical framework for understanding the dynamics of competition and cooperation in decentralized systems. Lastly, it references Caspar Schwarzschilling's attacks on proof-of-stake Ethereum, underscoring the ongoing quest for enhancing the security and resilience of blockchain technology. This refined version encapsulates the essence of the original content, maintaining its technical depth and accuracy while ensuring clarity and conciseness for voiceover narration. The paper examines the impact of the consensus layer reward on validators' behavior, specifically focusing on the Ethereum network's reward mechanism. It details the algorithm used by leaders and committee members to identify compliant tips, involving the LMDGHOST fork choice algorithm. The concept of the attestation reward is highlighted, emphasizing its significance as the largest part of the consensus layer rewards. This reward is given for correct and timely attestations, including votes for source and target checkpoints, and head votes for blocks. The paper also discusses the proposing reward for slot leaders and the sync committee reward for validators participating in the sync committee. This section provides a technical overview of the reward mechanisms and their implications on validator behavior. In Ethereum's consensus protocol, the validation process is governed by specific rules. A head vote is deemed correct if it matches the head of the beacon chain at a specified slot and the target checkpoint vote is also correct. The timeliness of an attestation, comprising three types of votes, is crucial for inclusion in the beacon chain within a predefined slot range. Specifically, the head vote must be included in the next slot's block to avoid losing rewards, whereas the source and target checkpoint votes have a wider slot range for inclusion. Ethereum's consensus protocol enforces financial penalties, known as slashing, for certain protocol violations. These violations include proposing two different blocks for the same slot or sending conflicting votes. This mechanism is designed to uphold accountable safety, ensuring that at least F adversarial validators can be identified and punished in case of a safety violation, while honest validators are not mistakenly punished. The slashing rules aim to maintain the security and integrity of the consensus protocol by discouraging malicious behavior among validators. By doing so, Ethereum's consensus protocol ensures that validators are held accountable for their actions, thereby maintaining the trust and reliability of the blockchain. In the context of Ethereum's reward mechanism, commitment attacks pose a significant threat. Specifically, reorgs can lead to liveness violations if all blocks proposed during an arbitrarily long period are reorganized. Moreover, if these blocks are reorged after the period, the attack would also compromise safety under any reasonable confirmation rule. The paper defines Ethereum as reorg resilient if an honest or rational leader's block consistently enters and stays in the canonical chain at all times. This implies both safety and liveness of the protocol, assuming frequent honest or rational leaders and their blocks are not empty. The authors present a proof of theorem too demonstrating that voting for BT Weekly dominates voting for BT1 or other blocks when solo validators follow the game rule. This case is therefore a Nash equilibrium. Additionally, the paper provides a proof of theorem 8, showing that if all solo leaders and attesters follow the adversary's game rule and propose and vote for compliant blocks in slots 1, p, this is a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium by backward induction. The extended game consists of subgames played by the leaders and attesters of the slots I element of P, denoted by GLI and Gavali respectively. The authors present the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium for the extended game, which consists of four subgames, GVAL, GL, GVAL, and GL, figure 7. In the first subgame, GVAL, the validator VAL makes a decision on whether to send a compliant vote or not. The payoff matrix for this subgame is presented in Table 2, where VVAL P denotes the event that VAL sends a compliant vote, and AVAL P denotes the event that all slot attesters send compliant votes. The authors show that for VAL, sending a compliant vote weekly dominates any other action, and it follows the game rule. In the second subgame, GL, the slot leader L makes a decision on whether to propose a compliant block or not. The payoff matrix for this subgame is presented in Table 3, Figure 7b, where R represents the inclusion reward that L receives for proposing a block in the canonical chain. The authors show that proposing a compliant block BP weekly dominates proposing any other block, 
and L follows the adversary's game rule. In the third subgame, G Val, the solo slot validator Val makes a decision on whether to send a compliant vote or not, given that all leaders and attesters of the slots I plus 1, P follow the adversary's game rule. The payoff matrix for this subgame is presented in Table 4, Figure 7C. The authors show that sending a compliant vote weakly dominates any other action, and Val follows the game rule. In the fourth subgame, GL, the slot leader L makes a decision on whether to propose a compliant block or not, given that all leaders and attesters of the slots I plus 1, P follow the adversary's game rule. The authors show that proposing a compliant block weakly dominates proposing any other block, and L follows the adversary's game rule. The authors use algorithm 1 to determine the block B asterisk operator that it obtains as its compliant tip, and extend it with its block B A. The payoff for Val is R, Aval P V Val P corner, which depends on the events Aval P and V Val P. The authors assume that the slot of testers send compliant votes, and the slot leader L proposes a compliant block B P. The payoff for L is R for proposing a compliant block, and zero for proposing a non-compliant block. The paper examines commitment attacks on Ethereum's reward mechanism, specifically on the slot leader's and a tester's behavior. It analyzes payoff matrices for compliant and non-compliant votes, demonstrating how proposing a compliant block weakly dominates any other action for the slot leader. The concept of subgame perfect Nash equilibria is applied to show that an adversary can ensure success by offering bribes to slot attesters. This discussion highlights the importance of considering these attacks and their implications on the network's safety and liveness. In the fixed validator set model, a solo validator's payoff matrix is a crucial component of the simple game. This matrix is characterized by four distinct scenarios, each with a unique payoff structure influenced by varying voting patterns. Specifically, these scenarios consider both compliant and non-compliant votes as well as their subsequent impact on the validator's rewards. As illustrated in Table 6, the payoff matrix delineates the consequences of the validator's choices on its rewards under different circumstances. The first scenario assumes a compliant vote, where the validator votes in accordance with the protocol. In this case, the payoff matrix reveals that the validator's reward is maximized when it votes honestly. Conversely, in the second scenario, the validator casts a non-compliant vote, resulting in a reduced reward. The third scenario introduces a Byzantine fault, where the validator's vote is compromised, leading to a further reduction in reward. Finally, the fourth scenario presents a hybrid scenario, combining compliant and non-compliant votes. Through this analysis, the payoff matrix provides a nuanced understanding of the system's dynamics and the incentives for validators under varying circumstances. By examining the validator's rewards in response to different voting patterns, this study sheds light on the complex interplay between validator behavior and system outcomes. This understanding is essential for informing the design of robust and resilient blockchain systems. The authors demonstrate that under the fixed validator set model, block BT-1 is a weakly dominant strategy for a solo validator. This indicates that if rational validators constitute over WWP of the committees, the simple attack would be successful. The proof of theorem 12 shows that if all slot 1, pleaders propose compliant blocks and all slot 1, patesters vote for compliant blocks, resulting in the reorg of the blocks from slot speed plus 1, 0, this is a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium by backward induction. The authors consider two branches of actions taken by the players. One where slot 1, pleaders propose compliant blocks and all slot 1, patesters accept val vote for compliant blocks, and another where slot 1, i leaders propose compliant blocks and all slot 1, i testers accept val vote for compliant blocks. In both cases, it is shown that the players have a dominant strategy to propose and vote for compliant blocks, resulting in a reward of R for the leader and a total payoff of PR for the attester. This is a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, as the player's actions are optimal given the actions of the other players. The authors then present a selfish mining inspired attack, which starts at the beginning of some slot T, where the number of adversarial slots in the interval T, T plus P is greater than or equal to the number of its non adversarial slots, and slot plus P is adversarial. 
The attack succeeds if the canonical chain at the end of slot P plus 1 is the sequence of adversarial blocks. The attack is analyzed under the fixed validator set model, where the adversary and the attesters of those slots preceding the adversarial slots and P are the players. The number of adversarial and non-adversarial slots within the slot range, P plus 1, are denoted by NA and NNA, respectively. The block at the tip of the canonical LMD ghost chain at the end of slot 0 is denoted by B0. The research paper discusses a game inspired by selfish mining, where an adversary attempts to manipulate the blockchain by controlling a subset of slots. The adversary generates a proof of leadership and sets game rules for specific slots, instructing the testers to refrain from publishing votes and later vote for the adversary's block. The adversary publishes its blocks and collects votes, delaying the final fork until the end of the interval to maximize its chances. The analysis shows that if the number of adversarial slots is greater than non-adversarial ones, the attack succeeds. The paper proves the existence of a Nash equilibrium where the adversary succeeds, demonstrating that a solo validator is incentivized to follow the game rule, leading to the adversary's success. This highlights the importance of coordination among validators to disincentivize such attacks. The paper discusses the vulnerability of Ethereum's reward mechanism to commitment attacks, particularly under the fixed validator set model inspired by selfish mining. It highlights that Ethereum remains susceptible to simple attacks even with an honest minority, assuming sufficient adversarial slots. The existence of a Nash equilibrium implies that provably secure alternatives to LMD Ghost cannot offer greater security than the predictable longest chain fork choice rule of Nakamoto consensus. The performance comparison focuses on the optimistic scenario, where each block includes 128 aggregated evidences for an earlier slot. Depending on the adversarial stake share, parameters NAG and N limit can be set to achieve a desired increase in block size. For instance, with an adversarial stake share of 0.1, NAG and N limit can be set to 16 and 8, respectively, resulting in a 7.37% increase in block size. The computational overhead is analyzed, assuming NAT equals 443 and NAG equals 16. Aggregators must verify NAT single attestation signatures, perform NAT 1 additions over the elliptic curve and one scalar multiplication over the elliptic curve to sign the aggregated attestation, resulting in a computational cost of 2 NAT C pair plus NAT 1 CAD plus CMUL. Deep learning-based approaches have revolutionized the field of recommender systems, allowing for the incorporation of complex user behavior and item attributes. However, existing methods suffer from scalability issues, making them unsuitable for large-scale industrial applications. This study proposes a novel framework, dubbed Hierarchical Graph Attention Networks, HGAT, which addresses these limitations by leveraging the strengths of graph attention mechanisms and hierarchical representations. HGAT's core innovation lies in its ability to model complex user item relationships through a hierarchical graph structure, enabling the capture of both local and global patterns. This is achieved by applying attention mechanisms at multiple scales allowing the model to selectively focus on relevant nodes and edges. The authors demonstrate the effectiveness of HGAT through extensive experiments on several benchmark datasets, showcasing significant improvements over state-of-the-art methods in terms of recommendation accuracy and scalability. A key contribution of this work is the introduction of a novel graph attention layer, which adaptively learns the importance of nodes and edges based on their contextual relationships. This layer is combined with a hierarchical pooling mechanism, allowing the model to capture hierarchical representations of user and item attributes. The authors provide theoretical insights into the workings of HGAT, deriving an upper bound on the approximation error of the learned representations. Experimental results highlight the robustness of HGAT to varying dataset sizes and sparsity levels, making it a promising solution for real-world recommender systems. The study concludes by discussing potential avenues for future work, including the incorporation of additional side information and the exploration of HGAT's applicability to other graph-based learning tasks. The section discusses potential attacks on Ethereum's reward mechanism, focusing on commitment attacks. 
It outlines parameters for an adversarial stake share of less than or equal to one-third, with NAG and N limit set to 128 and 64, respectively, resulting in a total evidence size of 4.053 megabytes per block. The computational overhead under the worst-case scenario is assessed for parties involved, including aggregators, block proposers, and verifiers. For instance, Block proposers incur an additional computational cost of 128 NAG C pair, while verifiers face a cost of 64, NAT minus 1, NAG plus 1, CAD plus 64, 2 plus 4 NAG, C pair. The communication overhead remains the same as in the optimistic case. The paper presents a simple attack without a proposer boost, where the adversary delays publishing its block until the next slot, manipulating game rules for testers. Depending on the outcome of the attester's votes, the adversary can either succeed or fail. The impact of future Ethereum changes is analyzed, revealing that none of the proposed modifications can mitigate the attack, and certain changes, such as single-slot finality, could make the attack even more destructive. In the current Ethereum protocol, the block and slot voting mechanism is a crucial component, and its potential adoption for in-protocol proposer-builder separation is a topic of interest. However, this mechanism is vulnerable to attacks, specifically the long-range attack, which can compromise its security. To mitigate this, the concept of secret leader election has been proposed, but it has limitations in defending against such attacks. In-protocol proposer-builder separation is a mechanism that aims to improve the efficiency and security of the block creation process. However, it is also susceptible to the long-range attack, which can lead to a range of negative consequences, including delayed block finality and increased network congestion. To address this, it is essential to develop a more robust and secure mechanism for proposer-builder separation. One potential solution is the concept of single-slot finality, which aims to achieve faster finality for blocks. This mechanism ensures that a block is considered final as soon as it is produced eliminating the need for multiple confirmations and reducing the risk of reorganizations. By achieving faster finality, single-slot finality can improve the overall efficiency and security of the Ethereum network. The discussion on the final page of the research paper focuses on the potential security risks and limitations of Ethereum's reward mechanism, particularly in the context of single-slot finality protocols. It emphasizes that even with these protocols, an adversary does not need to control a majority of validators to disrupt liveness for an extended period. This can be achieved by creating equilibria where profit-maximizing agents prioritize their own interests over the network's integrity. The paper also notes that while DAG votes can facilitate timely rewards, they do not prevent adversaries from delaying the inclusion of slot T evidences in the canonical chain. This could lead to discounted rewards over time giving adversaries some influence on attestation rewards. However, this issue is considered minor due to the frequent block creation on Ethereum and the relatively low discount factor for short time scales. The paper concludes by highlighting that such an adversary would face similar challenges in leader-based protocols with a single leader, rather than being a specific issue with the reward mechanism itself.